We get lots of letters and emails from you, our viewers, people who are extremely passionate about ATVs and who have really interesting stories. One of the most interesting stories that we've had come across our desks is Hunter Lovelace, a guy who actually lives only an hour from our offices and has an extremely interesting collection of sport ATVs. This guy's passionate about sport ATVs and we thought you'd like to learn a little bit more about him. I got my first machine when I was like four years old. Uh, Santa brought me a 2001 Polaris Scrambler, little 50cc. Um, that's what kind of started my whole dream with the whole machines. Um, rode it for many, many years. Um, slowly started growing into larger machines, but uh, mostly the Polaris Scrambler is what started, started it all. Well, it did all start with a Scrambler 90. Things progressed quickly, and Hunter's next ATV purchase was one of the most iconic ATVs in the entire industry. I bought an 86 250R that came out of Michigan. Is that this one? That is this one. So this yes. is the actual, your first 250R? Yes, I, I ended up with this. And of course, being a 1986, even in 2013 or 14, it was still rough. So then that's what got me into actually restoring the machines okay. and going through them from the frame up. None of this stuff I would put in the category of like mainstream, I mean, maybe other than the Banshee, Banshee. But, but like everything else is pretty kind of fringe, like unique. Basically the only ATV here that you have that's like, there's lots of them out there. It's the one that's super weird. If you ever ride a Banshee, it's, it's, it's cool. It's a different experience. I've tried to trail ride a Banshee through the mud and it was awful. Yeah, they're not much of a but trail. But on a dune or like on a fire road, oh, they yeah. were so good. It always puts a smile on my face for <laughs> sure. So now we got a Cannondale down here. Yep, this is a 2003 Cannondale Cannibal, 440 liquid cooled, four stroke, um, all aluminum frame. Pretty well how they came from factory, aside from a few subtle mods mm -hmm. thrown at it. Uh, basically made it more rider friendly. Um, my girlfriend actually rides this. I okay. consider this hers. It's, it's actually easy for her to ride because it's got so much power. Yep. It has so much low end grunt. Yep. Um, that's what these Cannondales were known for. She's never in a predicament where she doesn't have enough power to get up <laughs> any hills. So. Speaking of never running out of power, this thing. <laughs> this one you'll never run out of this power. This one, this I think honestly of all the bikes you have here, this is the one that, that just draws me immediately yeah. because you've only I've only ever seen one in my whole life. Yeah, this is an 87 Suzuki Quadzilla 500 liquid cool. 500, 500 two stroke CC, single. Single. Hold single. on tight. Just, I personally haven't done anything to this machine. When it was new, obviously somebody put a set of works front shocks on it, an FMF exhaust, but pretty well just kind of left it the way it was. So cool. Now over here is probably one of the more modern bikes you've got. 100%, it's a 2011 Can-Am DS450, but it's not just a standard DS450, it came from the Warner race team. Oh, okay, okay. So it, it was a Warner race bike that was ridden by Chris Biffle in the 2011 GNCC okay. season. Um, and this is in complete race trim, right down to the transponder. And this is one that I, like, I can't bring myself to restore at all, because this is how it came off the line. Yeah, like restoring a race bike is kind of weird. It because is. Because it's been built the way it's been built for a reason. Exactly. Yeah, if you've yeah. ever seen a GNCC race, they are not ridden gently. Well, let's uh, let's head outside and you can show us the rest of your fleet. Sounds good. So this is another one that looks very not stock. No, this one isn't stock at all. This is a, it's a Cannondale. A lot of people would look at it and either think it's a highly modified 400EX or a 250R hybrid, um, but it's not. It's a, it's a Cannondale. This one's got a big bore engine in it. It's got a 467 stroker, ported head, big valves, big cam. Cool. Back about 10 years ago, it actually was on a dyno and it made about 55 horse to the rear wheels. So wow. I, would, I would say safe to say um, with what I have, I've done a few modifications since then, it would be close to the 60 horsepower wow. mark. It works good. There's some scratches and some dings and bumps on it, but hey. It's a rider. It's a rider. This one looks like it was a rider at some point too. Yeah, it is. And it's, uh, that's my, it's another Cannondale. That one's a Cannondale Moto, which they were, they only made a few Cannondale Motos. Um, they weren't made for many years altogether and they only made like 250. And this was the motos. one they built for motocross racing. Correct. Like it came with no headlights. Like this, Correct. Is, this that, is an aftermarket. This yeah, this game. is. And there are some modifications that have been done with this. It gets pushed around with having so many machines and so, only so much time. Yeah. You can't do everything. Cause that's the big thing. Like I'll think something's a great idea. I'm like, that's what I'm gonna do. And then 
a couple months down the road, it's like, yeah, you know what? Maybe I, I'm going to change that up a little bit and do that. But that's speaking, that's the fun in it. Speaking of things to distract you, then we've got this bike here. Which... Yep. Yeah, I just picked this up actually. It's a 2008 Polaris 450 Outlaw MXR. And what I mean, I just picked this up. I actually like just picked this up last night. <laughs> like no word of a lie. I haven't even washed it yet. I haven't even ridden it. I haven't even rode it because when I went and went and looked at it, I didn't need to ride it because the condition in oh, itself it's yeah. just showed it. Because the guy asked me, he says, do you want to take it for a ride? I'm like, nah, I'm okay. It's truly a one owner, 450 MXR. I When I bought it, I actually got all the dealer paperwork for it. Oh, that's cool. So the original owner's manual, CD, all the original tools, spark plug um, tool. Nice. It was pretty cool. That sort of spare key. So when you get that bag, you hand it to you. It's like, it's almost like buying a brand new one. Yeah, it'll be fun to see. Cool, to I, I'd be interested to hear what you think of it after riding it. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. So last but not least, obviously, is this guy's clean too. Yeah, it's my 2006 Suzuki LTR 450. I mean, it's, in my eyes, it's dirty right now because I just got back from Silver Lake Sand Dunes with it. The comfort, the rider position on it was very nice and uh, the power was smooth and it worked well. If you have an old machine that's sitting in your backyard in a shed, there is still hope. Pull that machine out and like, it's there's nothing that can't be fixed, especially with the amount of people that are parting machines out. There's parts kicking around. At the end of the day, with the manufacturers not making this stuff anymore, if you can make something super, super cool and you can stand back at it and say, I did that, I mean, that says a lot.